Hey everybody, Kevin Broughton coming at you from Loan Officer Impact. And we are super excited today. Obviously I got my partner in crime, Ryan Surratt with me, but our guest today is a really special guy. Um, I've gotten to know this guy exceptionally well over the last couple of years. And in my opinion, he's a much finer person than he is professional. And he happens to be one of the best mortgage professionals in the country. Um, but he lives in the uh, Houston, Texas area. And, uh, a, a truly level 10 guy. And uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce my friend, Mike McFarland. Mike, how are you today? And I'm doing great, Kevin. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you, Ryan, too. My yeah. Pleasure. Thank yeah, you for taking the time to to share it with us. You know, I'm, I'm appreciative. Uh, you know how I feel about you personally. And uh, for you to take the time out of your busy life to just spend about 20 minutes with us is, is a good deal. So uh, for everyone tuning in, Mike is a special type of guy. He uh, runs a branch and he's built a really nice team. Uh, I know he apped over five and a half something million dollars worth of loans in the mm -hmm. month of April this year, you know, which just culminated wow. about two days ago. Um, and the way he's built his business is the right way. It's the proper way, but it's also, uh, it, it's not easy going. And so we always try to talk about the tough stuff and the real stuff on this show. And uh, not every single day has been sunshine and rainbows for you, I assume, Mike, right? Uh, that's the truth. <laughs> um, but what you've done is incredible. So uh, we wanted to hit on a few topics today. I know we don't have a ton of time, but um, if you don't care, do you care if Ryan and I just fire off a few questions at you and see if you can uh, share with our audience kind of some of the things that you've done? Yeah, bring it. I'm ready for you. All right, Ryan, do you want to start or do you want me to? Well, so I got to ask. So, Mike, I mean, you meet with so many real estate agents. I mean, just ballpark. How many, like the last six months, I mean, how many agents have you probably met with? Um, so our goal was to get to the end of March. This is starting in uh, the end of July. So August of last year, right? August one, our goal to get to March is to have 300 agent meetings. And I think we probably hit like 285 by the time we got, got to that point. So um, we've wow, met with, incredible. needless to say, a lot of real estate agents. So, huh, so, so I got to ask, so how, how have you, how have you been able to get in front of so many in such a really quick amount? I mean, six months, that's, that's a quick time to do almost 300 agents. Right. Right. So yeah, that's, um, I, I mean, it's a concerted effort, right? I mean, if we, you know, I, 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 I kind of live through the mortgage marketing animals, DSP daily success plan. Right. I mean, my, my, my calendar's blocked. I'm structured. Uh, I have support around me. Thank goodness. Cause if I didn't, it wouldn't be that easy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and it's not that easy. It's still hard, but with support, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, and so really when you look at like, how do we do it? One is just gotta, you gotta honor the time block. Right. Yeah. So when we look at, all right, our prospecting time, we make sure that we honor that time in the beginning back in August. And I should back up a little bit on that because, um, you know, we, when we got to January of last year and rates started to go up, um, you know, I, I was looking at my business and going, man, I'm not, I'm not really excited about what I'm seeing here in regards to, you know, interest rates and, and the market was still vibrant, right? I mean, it was, it's, it was crazy hot until July, but I could just see the hand running on the wall, number of leads that we were getting was beginning to come down a little bit. Um, applications coming in. It just, everything was beginning to point to, hey, there's a slowdown coming. Uh, and I was looking at our agent list and um, I wouldn't even look at it from the the point of view of like pro, uh, qualified agent list. I was just looking at my agent list going, man, we're really anemic. We don't have a lot of agents that are sending us business. I mean, we probably had 15 to 20 um, that I could say, yeah, we could count on those guys where they'd qualified, yeah, somewhere, somewhere. And when the market changed, they, they weren't really qualified, right? Um, so I, you know, I, I got into May and June. It's like, man, we've got to change gears. Um, and so um, when July hit, you know, vacations, all that stuff are going on. I had a mission trip in June. I was just like, that's it. You know, we got to marshal the resources of the team and just start cold calling. You know, we need, we need to meet a, a lot of agents in a short amount of time. Um, and so that was really the impetus, just seeing it's like, it is a change is coming. If we don't get ahead of it, we're going to be in worse shape. Um, so, uh, we just started doing Thor's hammer, right? We, we, I, I had four people on my team making phone calls at that point in time. Um, and we were, we took 
30 agents on each list. So each one of us had 30 and we had a day where we just pounded out phone calls. Um, and so with that, we, we would get about eight meetings every week out of it. It was kind of crazy. Um, and then from there, it was just a matter of uh, getting out and, and having our conversations and, and getting to know them and, and then flipping them over to a focus 40 and, and then starting to call them and, and cultivate relationships to have opportunities to do business together. That's incredible. So- it's yeah. A, incredible, and B, just for everyone listening, three takeaways real quick in case it, it, you might have missed it. Number one, um, Mike referenced the DSP. If you don't know what that is, that's a daily success plan. If you don't know what that is, you can go to Results with Ryan or growingwithkevin.com, and we'll talk to you about it. Uh, you can book a 15-minute time on our, on our calendar anytime you want to. Um, second, he talked about Thor's Hammer. If you don't know what that is, they make a – certain amount of calls through a definitive time frame that's time blocked on their calendar that nothing's allowed to get in the way there is no uh, other option it is yep. that's the mission and the mission has zero percent chance of failing because we are not going to not make those calls uh, that's what Thor's hammer is and what I marvel at Mike is a couple things but one of them is the amount and the level of stick to that you that we're able to do that week after week after week. It's hard enough for some folks to do it for a day. You guys have found a way to motivate one another, the four-person team, to do it consistently every day, week after week, month after month, going now into year after year. How yeah. do you help keep that passion when it's tough for some guys to, to keep consistent on that? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... So I will say this, that, right. I mean, the, the hard push to the cold call doesn't last forever as long as you stick with it. Um, because at some point you have to shift into relationship mode. Yeah. So I can only do so many cold calls and then I, I meet with those people and I now I have to follow up. And so there, there's a natural transition that takes you out of the cold and into the warm. Yes. Um, so really where we're sitting right now um, is in the warm right? I, you know, t- I don't have really the bandwidth to do Thor's hammer at this moment, just because I'm really trying to cultivate business out of, out of what I've worked on over the last six, eight months. Right. Right. Um, so for me, I'm in, I'm in that relationship. How do we break the habit of the realtor um, that's used to referring the other guy? Right. How do we, how do we become the habit? Um, how do we become top of mind so that, you know, instead of, um, you know, just out of, out of, like pre pre programming, referring this one guy they've used forever that may not be that great, to getting them to send that that contact to us and let us right. make that contact with them. So, you know, I, I would encourage everybody that you know, yeah, you're gonna have to put your head down. You're gonna have to be in cold call mode, and you know what? You're gonna have to like it. You gotta like it. You got you gotta like the fact that you know what? I'm gonna call a ton of people. I'm gonna get no's. It's okay, but I tell you what: if you make ten phone calls, one of them's gonna say yes, and they're gonna be nice about it. Right. So it's like, that's cool. That's all I'm looking for. I don't, I'm just looking for somebody that's going to be, I think we started this all off as we've been, all the cold calls we're doing, we figured out that I'm looking for like-minded, like-hearted real estate agents. And that's exactly the language that I use on the phone. Hey, hey, Kevin, it's Mike McFarland, the Mortgage Mike Group. Hey man, listen, I know you're super busy, brother. I'm I'm not going to take a ton of your time. My team and I are, are a local lender here. We do pretty good business. And uh, we're just looking to partner up with like-minded and like-hearted agents here in Houston. I'd like to have a cup of coffee with you. I hope everyone has a takeaway from that. If you can say that script, how hard is that to say? But I think something that I hear in your voice, Mike, and I think I have an advantage because I know you, but it's authentic. And when it's not authentic, it doesn't have the same results as when it is founded in your core values. I know what your core values are. Right. Because I know you and I'm not shocked that you've attracted both referral sources and clients that have the same core values as you. Exactly. And, right. And that comes through authentically whenever anyone spends 15 minutes with you. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think as a little takeaway, please make sure everybody that regardless of your script, have it be authentic. Because if it's not, I think good realtors can see through people that are telling them they can grow their business by 50% or telling them they, something they can tell. Right. And so just keep it authentic. Do you agree that that's important? Oh, it's 100%. I think you got to know who you're looking for 
I, I know I know what the agent I'm looking for. I know exactly the profile of them. Um, and so I just use my language to really be an attractant to that. Right. And my language lands on them. And when when I when I like minded and like hearted, if that lands on them, great. I tell you what, when we meet, we're going to connect. Um, and if we don't, it's okay. I mean, I'm not desperate. I don't I don't need to work with everybody. I don't want want to work with everybody. And a lot of times, my I'll take my meeting that direction. You know, I think I think a lot of times I know real estate agents call it commission breath. Um, I think loan officers have commission breath with agents. Yeah. Right. I just want to be everything to them. And right. No, I don't. Like if you don't, if you don't work, if we're not, if we're not like-minded and like-hearted, we're not going to work well together. And it's going to be painful for me. And the truth is I don't have time for pain. Um, I have time for long-term business relationships that are going to help us grow together. Right. Because the value that I bring to a transaction frees up my real estate agent to find more business, right? That I secure their paycheck. I protect yes. their clients' earnest money. I do a lot of things and and I'm not gonna get um I'm not gonna just give that to everybody. Mm. Well, that, that's a great value proposition right there. I think that yeah. I think that's being authentic and having your value proposition as you talk to agents trying to expand your business. I think that's key. And I think that's a probably where a lot of loan officers miss the mark. They don't have that value proposition to truly give that's right. authentic. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, can I also think too, I often say, in fact, I have it on my wall right behind me here that, you know, that the ability to sell from abundance versus scarcity is the greatest closing tool in the history of the sales game. And right. I really believe that. And when you can come from such a place of abundance and not from scarcity, like you just so appropriately shared, it makes a huge difference. And there, and, and I think re, any referral source, be it realtor, divorce attorney, or financial planner, or insurance agent, whoever you get business from, if they sense that you're so desperate for the relationship or the deal, you lose. Yeah. And what I love about you, one of the many things is you come from a non-arrogant place of confidence and abundance where you don't want everyone. You're not trying to get them. You don't want to work with everyone. You're not the king of every mortgage. You're, you know exactly what you are. And those attracted to what you are are attracted to working with you. And those that aren't are repelled to work with you, which is good for you. It's I, That's ideal. <laughs> it is. So, so everyone tuning in, remember the importance of abundance selling and yeah. not scarcity selling. And there's a humongous difference. Yeah. Yeah. So can we transition real quick? So a, a big thing, I mean, if you've met with about 300 real estate agents mm -hmm. over the past six months, you know, that's a lot. One, that's a huge mm -hmm. undertaking, great success. But what about your follow-up? So, so go over that because yeah. I mean, you're great and get in front of them. So how does that follow-up yeah. deepen that relationship you, you mentioned? Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of ways we follow up. Um, so one, you know, every agent that we do meet with, um, we put into our Thursday agent text, right? We do a market update every Thursday. So they go into that group texting. Um, so that at least we're, they're getting relevant, good information. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the, hey, I'm working this weekend uh, text, but what I am a fan of is information. And so our market update text gives an idea of where interest rates are that week. Are they stable, increasing, getting worse? Gives them an idea of what turn times are for underwriting and appraisals. What I'm really looking at is when you go out on the weekend as a realtor, you can use that as a resource on your third-party financing addendum, at least in Texas. I don't know what about other states, what they do, but, yeah, but Texas, has a, yeah, Texas has a third-party financing addendum and they're always asking about interest rate and turn times and like, right. here it is. I mean, you don't need me. Just pull up the text and you're good to go. Um, so we do that. Um, additionally, what we do is we, um, once we meet with them, we, we put them into our Focus 40 um, and that's where we'll, we'll just do our weekly follow-up. Now I'll tell you, I mean, after, not all 300 agents are in a focus 40. They're not correct. Um, because we get, maybe we get a little bit more information on them. Maybe they're not doing a ton of business. Um, you know, maybe there's not a match. Um, like when I, when I meet with an agent and I got, I'm, I, everything I do, I just want y'all to know, I didn't, I didn't make it up. I'm a borrow, right. I'm borrowing from everybody. So, yeah. um, so I got a friend of mine, Josh there we go get the mic better i got a friend of mine josh in tennessee and uh, he and i talk every thursday in the morning in fact i just talked to him today um dear friend we share life together and, and he's in the mortgage business and um anyway 
we, we've been talking about our realtor appointments. And, and so I borrowed it from him. He he's basically says, there's three things that I tell a real estate agent. And this is, I'm going to give you my pitch on it because I love it. Um, and I want to meet with an agent. I'm like, so, hey, Kevin, listen, there's three things that I'm looking for when, when I look for a relationship with the real estate agent. I'm sure, like you, you probably have some idea of what you're looking for in a loan officer. I mean, you can, I'm ha- if you want to share your ideas with, with me, that's awesome, Mark. I could at least share you with you my ideas. And um, I'd love to hear your ideas. Yeah. Right. What, what that's are your exactly, three? That's exactly what they say, right? <laughs> so right. I'm like, so listen, the first thing, the first criteria is this, man, we got to like each other. You know, so here's the deal. If, uh, if I'm calling, if you're calling me and the phone rings and I see your name on it, Kevin, I better be really excited that you're calling me. That's the first thing. That's the first level. And the truth of the matter is when I call you and you see my number pop up, you got to be excited that I'm calling. If you're not, this is going to be a hard relationship uh, to get started. The second thing I look at is, can we trust each other? I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that um, you got to trust me to protect your commission, to get your clients to closing. There's a deep level of trust. And the flip side of that is I got to trust you because you got to run the contract for me. So we got to work together in a, in a, a spirit of trust to make sure that one, you, I'm going to take care of you and your clients. They're not going to lose money and you're going to earn your commission. But two, you got to run a contract right for me. It's painful when it doesn't run right. So we got we to trust each other. Third thing is this. I look at a relationship from how can we be profitable together? So we're both in the same boat, growing our businesses, and we got to be profitable in our businesses. So I want to be in the boat rowing in the same direction with you. And so what does that look like? Well, that looks like what we do with the daily success plan. And then at that point, I can go into our follow-up, right? Touch the partner, touch the lead, touch the partner, Tuesday updates, pre-approved and looking calls, right? All the things that we do, the just ask, right? Like, right. you know, look, I'm, my job is to get business back to you. If you send me a referral, one out of 10 referrals that I get is going to come back as a referral to you because I'm going to find somebody else. Yep. So, um, so that's how, that's how we kind of pitch the relationship and the first I love place. it. I love it. Just as a five second recap, folks, like, trust, profitable together. And if you can't build around that, I don't know what kind of sales you're in because that's the only stuff that matters right there. And if you can, I I assume that helps you too on the profitable together where if they say in their car, some guy says, Oh, I heard this guy in the radio is an eighth lower. They're probably selling you. I assume because they like you, they trust you and they realize you have to be profitable together where they're trying to, to have them continue working with you. I assume that acts in your favor, correct? It sure does. Good, good. Yeah, that, that, that's fantastic stuff yeah. right there. Um, we're running a little low on time and there's something else <laughs> I want to make sure we hit on. I could talk to Mike McFarland for hours if he'd yeah. allow it, but I, I could. Um, our listeners the, may not want that. You started your own podcast uh, not too mm-hmm. long ago. Um, yeah. And I know it's already off to a great start. And uh, I was wondering if you could just share. I, I hear a lot of loan officers nationwide tell me that regularly that they're going to or would like to start their own podcast, yet almost zero of them that I talk to again actually have done it. Could you tell me how you started it, what you focus on, what yeah. the name of it is, so we can hopefully shout it out and get some people coming to it more than you already have and why you did it? Yeah. So uh, it's called the Heart of Real Estate Podcast. Okay. Um, and so our intention okay. is to uh, real, um, interview top producing real estate agents, uh, specifically in the Houston market right now. Right. Um, and so really, you know, I get, when I talk to a real estate agent about it, I, I come to him from the point of view of, hey, this is turnkey digital marketing, free digital marketing for you. You're going to come in, we're going to do an interview. When it's done, we're going to have a podcast. I'm going to have it hosted on a YouTube channel. We're going to have four shorts that come out of it. We're going to post those shorts for four weeks after we do the show. So you're going to have five weeks of content that's coming out that didn't cost you anything other than your time. Great. So that's the podcast, right? That, that's kind of the, that's the deliverable or the, what, the value in the podcast, right? Um, how did I get started and why? Um, yeah, that's a good question. You know, one, I just, I was looking for, you know, how do we, how do we begin to approach, especially bigger producing agents in a way that's just not with a handout, right? 
Yes. Um, how do we support our agents that we're working with today um, that says, hey, we care about you and there's something we can do to help you in your, in your business as well, just beyond like doing mortgages. So we got started in the podcast. It was probably, I would say we're up 15, 16 months into it. Uh, it was it was rough, man. I'm gonna tell you the first the first six months of it, we we're just trying to figure it out. I had um, I had a soundboard from a, a show that I used to have called Malting with Mortgage Mike. I used to do a Facebook Live show, and we go we go hit the crap breweries in Houston. My liver did not like that, and we needed no. to quit that. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, I'm glad I did. Um, but it gave me the equipment, right, and a little bit of know how. Um, and the same thing when I started that show, I had no idea what I was doing. I started off with a phone right. and started recording off my phone and figured out, Hey man, you got to have better sound. And so what I would tell people is this, if you're going to do it, you just need to park a time on your calendar. That's the key. If you don't put it on your calendar, it won't happen. Nope. It's an idea. That's it. Once you park it on your calendar and you honor your calendar, then you're forced to do something about it. So that's the first thing you got to put on the calendar. Secondly, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can start with your phone. You can start with whatever it is. Just record something, right? Um, and then get better at it as you go. So, like, if you look at where we started a year ago, we're working off of a laptop and a webcam uh, with some decent microphones and a, and a soundboard. We had no idea what we were doing with the soundboard. Right. Uh, today, I got a soundboard that's absolutely dialed in. I got this really cool Shure mic because these are great microphones. Uh, I got a really good digital uh, camera, which I'm on right now. It's 4k. It's super awesome. I yes. didn't start there though. Um, I just learned as every time that we did a show, we just thought about how do we make it better? What do we do? I didn't start off with, um, you know, we, we started off with just hosting it into a podcast channel and then, um, and then having it on YouTube, but we didn't have the four, you know, four shorts out of it and they're right. not shorts technically, but whatever they are, just smaller clips that just that developed over time. We just started with, let's do a podcast and we can promote it and give the agent at least content. How's it been received by the realtors in your community? Do they want to be on the show? Do they absolutely enjoy the invite? Yeah. They love the invite. Love um, yeah. They love the invite. Right. So let, let me just say this for, I, I want to tell everybody out there this, if you're looking to do a podcast, the first thing you need to do is build up your business. Do not do a podcast. Until you have, you know, you've done your Thor's hammer, Great you've got point. your Focus 40 working. It's a distraction. The podcast will absolutely take you out of your game. Um, the most important part of your game, which is you need to be selling and meet with agents. This is, an, this is an addition to, right? This is a supplement to what I'm doing today that helps me, um, helps me get deeper into the real estate community. So that's the first thing. Don't, if, you don't, if you're brand new, don't do a podcast. Can I just speak to that real quick? Mm -hmm. I think, I hope everyone really gets what Mike just said. And I, I think it's worth one minute to reiterate because we have a epidemic problem in the United States, I mean, the mortgage, mortgage industry with what I call the shiny penny syndrome. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's so desirable to see something sexy and want to go that route. And then you see something else a week later that sounds good. And this guy bought these leads in Canada. and well, it, it can be nonstop. Uh, it's like oh, a yeah. kid, you know, like you, you just get attacked with all these things that look and sound good, right? But at the end of the day, if you are not consistently closing eight to 10 units a month, the best thing you can do without a shadow of a doubt, I don't think there's anyone that can prove me wrong, is to do this Thor's Hammer Monday through Thursday, two hours a day and laser focus on it. Am I not yep. right? 100%. 100%. And from that effort, it gives you the opportunity because you've built a business. And unfortunately, there's a lot of loan originators that are still stuck in having a career or a job. Yep. And you have been able to take the resources that you've earned and the time that you have to do some other things to accent your business. But you couldn't do that if you didn't have an existing business. And for those that aren't consistently hitting the numbers I just said, I think anything outside of what we just talked about is a distraction. And, and yep. so I just want to reiterate what you said. I couldn't feel any more solid about it. Ryan, you agree? I do. And really just to kind of add to that, because, you know, Kevin, you and I have chatted with some loan officers even here recently that shiny pen, penny syndrome, like they, they got it right now. And, and so Mike, just to kind of clarify, because you got numbers, man, that really uh, those in the mortgage space right now would admire meeting with 300 agents in 
not just in six months, maybe in a year or two years. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. And so, so I would say that just to clarify, the basis of your business is not podcast, is not tech. It's really you getting out there mm-hmm. um, on the phone, in person, yeah. and deepening relationships. You know, yeah. not nothing. You know, there's there's sometimes people talk about getting on LinkedIn, and I don't even have a LinkedIn. I think, and you know, mm-hmm. or, or being and doing Facebook marketing or this or that. It, it. It's um, it's really just being there, deepening the relationships through phone calls and in person events, coffee appointments. That yeah. really is the basis for the success, I think, in this market. You agree? I think it's, I think yeah. it's a basis yeah. for success in any yeah. market, sure. quite honestly. Quite, I mean, yeah. that, sales is 100% about contact. It's a full yeah, contact great. sport. This doesn't, it's not social media. Um, it's not podcasting. It's sure. it's nothing but picking up the telephone, talking to people, having coffees with them. We're doing a lot of Zoom appointments nowadays, which is yeah. even better. Like I find people are super receptive to just having a Zoom, Zoom like refresh meeting I with agree. my agents. Like I'll do a 15 minute Zoom call. They love it. We just talk, we catch up. Um, I might, you know, might talk a little bit about what we're doing in our business to help support them. But I mean, it, they're much more receptive to meeting for a coffee than or to a Zoom than a coffee. So it even works better. Well, Mike, we've kind of got to the end of our time and you've been more than generous with your time. And I hope you know how much I appreciate just something you may or may not know, but I've become pretty close with one of your teammates and um, her commitment is off the chart and her dedication to everything you've just talked about is 100 percent and so your leadership is also i know you're too humble to ever talk about that but um what i've gotten to know from this gal like she shared with me how she successful she's been with that thursday update and um she is so in tune with every word you've just said and she's honored and 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 proud to be part of your group and it's so refreshing for me to see other mortgage professionals who attack this business daily like an animal and get the results and and she and you and I know there's others on the team obviously but I just have gotten to know her a lot of late and a she's an incredible human being but yeah. to see her pride and, and and sense of accomplishment and sense of goodness in partnering with you and doing all the things you just spent the last 30 minutes sharing is really special. And I think you should be proud of what you've built and what you're continuing to build. I appreciate your friendship at a high level. And uh, and I just thank you for taking the time to share with Ryan and I today. Um, for every loan officer out there nationwide, regardless of where you work, our sole and singular mission at Loan Officer Impact is to help impact your lives in a positive way. Uh, if you didn't get one of the nine takeaways from Mike today, then you probably weren't listening. So thank you so much. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much, Mike, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of today. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Please go to the Heart of Real Estate podcast (laughs) and and give a shout out to Mike. Um, Check it out. It's called the Heart of Real Estate podcast and uh, please honor him by just taking a minute and going to see an episode or two. Thank you. Listen to him. Yeah, listen to, like, subscribe, and share. Yeah, listen to, like, subscribe, and share. Everyone get that? Listen to, like, subscribe, and share. All right, we'll see you all real soon. Thanks for tuning in to Loan Officer Impact. Have a great day. Be sure to visit successunlimited.us for free loan officer tools, tips, and video resources. To schedule time with Kevin, visit growingwithkevin.com.